us now to talk about it is one of the lawyers representing the Brown family. Once again, Bakari Sellers, it's good to see you on the show. Wish we were under different circumstances, yeah. Bakari, but happy to have you here. First of all, uh, you mentioned in your news conference, outside of the disrespect, how did they even explain to you that we're only going to show you 20 seconds of what they deem pertinent video of this body cam? First, thank you for having me. Um, it's awesome just to be on this network and it's awesome to be with both of you all who I admire for your work in the journalism field and representing black folk around the diaspora just pitch perfectly. So thank you. Yeah, they said this was pertinent information. Um, and when you think about that, they could have shown the family the entire video and deemed that entire video or entire videos to be pertinent information. But instead, what you saw was shooting already happening. Uh, them yelling at him, shouting at him to let me see his hands, let me see his hands. His hands were on the wheel. He even backed away uh, while he was being shot at. And I will tell you that at no point did he put their lives in danger. Um, they were ha they had AR-223s. Uh, um, it was, I, I don't know if you all recall this, but my, my best comparison um, is in the 1990s in Atlanta, Georgia, when you had the Red Dogs. Um, and I don't know if anybody watching mm -hmm. remembers those red dogs, but mm -hmm. this is what it was very similar to those mm -hmm. jump out boys coming and uh, he mm -hmm. had no gun, no drug and they executed him. Wow. Yeah, you you've been very clear. Uh, other members of the team and the family have been very clear to call this an execution. Um, as Mike and I were just chatting about right before we came to you, Bakari, and thanks again for being on the show. Uh, we talked a little bit about this order and the notion that, or perhaps it is the truth, that only a judge can release this order, but it's been, what, five, six days, and that could have been done. I've heard mm. you say the way you were spoken to was just incredibly disrespectful, mm. something about not wanting, you're not gonna come in here and bully us, which I read to mean, mm. black man, stand down. You're not gonna come in here mm -hmm. and tell us how we do things around here. So can you talk a little bit about mm what happened behind your public demand for the release of this body cam footage? First, first point is the law is extremely bad and arcane and terrible in the state of North Carolina. So I hope the okay. NAACP, all individuals who, you know, from the Charlotte Hornets to the Panthers to, you know, our grandmas and, and, mm -hmm. and great aunts, et cetera, that are here are calling their legislators, telling them how awful this law is. Second, as we saw in Columbus, if uh, Anthony Brown was doing anything they thought justified this shooting, you and I all know mm -hmm. that they would have run down to the courthouse and that thing would have been filed on Wednesday night and they would have yeah. shown that video as soon as they possibly mm -hmm. could have, right? Um, and as for me personally, I try to take that out, uh, my personal kind of issues out, but I was, um, I was so hurt and so angry that I had those like mm -hmm. anger tears that that get in your eyes because at no point yeah. um, I was sitting next to the sheriff and the black deputy sheriff and this was the county attorney and there was a gentleman in there just there to show the video. At no point in my professional career had I been talked to mm -hmm. and cursed out and basically all just called a boy. And it was just so humiliating yeah. and so emasculating. Uh -huh. um, and then you, Mike, you, you know, you got to, you're in the middle of a sheriff's department. And so you have mm -hmm. to act accordingly. That's first. Um, and two, you walk outside and the entire world is watching. And so I, I you know, I, I hope my father's proud. Uh, that's all I can say because I attempted to I gather myself and I can tell you that Ben Crump um, was someone who pulled me aside and helped me gather myself. You gotta have a good team around and we have a really, really good mm -hmm. team of lawyers. Yeah, it's hard to keep that your composure in, in those situations when you're being blatantly uh, disrespected. But uh, on that point, Bakari, and, and I know you don't want to make it just about you. You, it, it wasn't just they're saying we're not going to be bullied. They used curse words when it came to that. Once again, showing only 20 seconds of video they felt was pertinent in this matter. The whole world is watching police departments around the nation. We just came off the Derek Chauvin trial where he got convicted on all three counts. With the, the, the environment that we're in right now, to have that level of disrespect, not only to you, but to the family, what does that tell you? I mean, I walked in there with two degrees. 
So imagine how they treat everybody else. You know, I say that with every mm. ounce of humility. Yeah. I had my suit on. I was being as respectful as I possibly could. Had my law degree with me. And, you know, I should have known better. But they 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 treated me like every other. And to be completely honest. Mm. And so, mm. um, you know, I just think that we have to take that into account. Um, and I, I feel bad for the family because, you know, Khalil um, was the strongest one of us all yesterday. He's the oldest son of Andrew, and he held it together. I, I um, have never, and I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of us have never had to watch our father executed on tape. Mm. And you have to sit around the table from the department and the people who, um, who knew it happened and were part of the same mm -hmm. organization. And Khalil was just as strong as he could be last night after he saw the video, the first person we saw, because his mother even wasn't even allowed to see the video. The, la the first person he saw mm -hmm. when we walked out was his mom. And his mom said he just put his full weight on me. And she said, that boy ain't cried like that in a long time. And so just keep that, the, yeah. the family in your prayers. Keep this, this portion of the country in your prayers. Hopefully, um, today they get it right. Yeah, or we hope that happens, and we definitely will keep them in our prayers there. Um, you know, I, I, we hear the state has taken over the investigation. How relieved are you that that has happened, uh, considering what is happening there locally? I, I didn't know that. Are you breaking I'm news saying, to me? We're, we, well, well, we're well I, we, we heard, I, I've heard that the state was, was taken over. So you haven't heard that the state is taken over? Is that well? We know you haven't heard state, that. the state bureau. The state bureau of investigation is leading the investigation. One of the things that okay. uh, we will be evaluating. One of the things that we want probably to see. We're having that discussion this morning. I didn't know if it had already um, happened, but we're we're at. We believe we're going to ask the the state attorney general to come in and take over the investigation. Um, we're we're okay. working through that. I just don't know how we can have the district attorney here who works hand in hand. Uh, with law enforcement every day to to lead this investigation and have any type of uh, any type of objectivity. So yeah, the, this I, I, you were getting yeah. me excited, man. I was like, man, we moving the ball good this morning. It, it's a it's a uh, yeah, man. It's going justice. Justice don't move fast for nobody, and we're learning that. Yeah. yeah. Well, perhaps we've learned something from Minneapolis. Just one case, as we see, we can't even. If, achieve a victory there, whatever that means, um, without a few days later, the next day, that night, and here we are again. Um, so hopefully the state attorney general will answer your call, much like, you know, Keith Ellison handled things and really pushed justice forward in Minneapolis. But I want to end with this, Bakari, and maybe you could help us, because Ben Crump is but one man, and he was on the show last week, and we talked to him about that how he needs strong leaders. I mean, you're a very visible attorney, particularly um, with your roots in the South. And I asked him about his three-prong approach, right? The criminal aspect, getting the family, uh, a hearing at least of this grievance, this disgusting grievance here. Also the legislative support in pushing to get reforms, but also the PR. And that's what I want you to speak to humanizing Mr. Brown, who clearly had a family mm -hmm. who loves him, has, um, and seeing him day in and day out working so hard, God, on the, just the PR to remind people, we're talking about a human being here. Can you speak to that? Because when you represent this family, it's as much about that as it is everything else. Yeah, and yesterday, um, first of all, you, you gotta know what you're built for and what you're not. And I know that I can become an emotional mess. And yesterday when his little girl was out there, I was on the, you know, it was just brought mm -hmm. tears to my eyes because you yeah. see why he's three years old. Uh, so we had his oldest son and we had his little girl out there and she still wasn't really sure while everybody was out there, you know, for her father. And so it was just, um, you know, we try to do that. You got to win in the court of public opinion because only in these type of cases do you still have to fight for someone's basic humanity. You know, in the Med Mal case, um, you know, they, they are still treated as humans and respected. But in these cases, the first thing they do is call Andrew Brown anything but a child of God. Mm -hmm. And so we mm -hmm. have to do that. Court of public opinion is so important. A court of law, me, Ben, and, and Harry are, are really good there. Uh, we, we're not worried about nobody out savvying us and being able to do and have our level of skill in the court mm -hmm. of law. 
And then the legislative process is just where we haven't had any success. Um, and that's where we call on all of you all and everybody watching to make sure that they yeah. call their United States senators, make sure they call their, uh, their um, um, elected officials, state and local, because we, we got to have policy change. If we don't have policy change, we're going to be burying more black folks.